All right. So if you've just joined us, a couple of prop options. Blanket or towel, blocks or something you can put your hands on for some stability, and a chair maybe if you would like to try some chair work. So I'm going to grab a chair. I'll be back in one second and we'll get started. All right. So our theme for today, and you can either sit or stand, whatever, for a few moments. We'll do some centering in just a moment, but I want to just tell you a little bit about what we're working on today. So our theme. Um, is one of, in the eight limbs of yoga, right, we have the very first two things, the yamas and the niyamas. And they sort of tell us um, or guide us on things that we can be considering about how we live our lives, not just how we practice asana, but how we can live our lives in a really mindful way. Um, and one of them is santosha, which means contentment. And I have been exploring this in my own world, I'm sure we all have, is just how do we sort of feel not just um, going through the motions of where we are in this new space with this virus and pandemic going on, but is there an opportunity to find a little bit of contentment, to just sort of accept, but rejoice as well. Um, and so I want to explore that today, both on the mental and emotional state, but also in our physical practice. Um, Santosha can come from breath, it can come from our emotional well-being, but we'll also really pay attention to noticing where our bodies are in this present moment and seeing if we can find a little bit of contentment in our bodies, even if something is not feeling super comfortable or even if we're being challenged or even if we're not being challenged at all, can we find that sense of contentment in the space that we're occupying right now. So in Sanskrit, um, santosha is comprised of two words, and I just love this etymological well, uh, um, Sanskrit-based um, uh, study. So sam means completely, so all together entirely, and tosha means acceptance, satisfaction, contentment. It's this idea of being happy with what you have, where you are, with who you are, and there's that sense of peace that comes from that. And so we'll explore this theme today in our practice. And what I would like you to do right now is to just take a really good seat for a couple minutes of centering. What that means is not just a slouch on the couch, right? So wherever it is that you wanna sit, whether it's on the couch or on your mat, on blankets, on the chair, See if you can really begin to feel your body and begin noticing your breath, noticing your heart space, noticing your mind. And I'm gonna scoot back to my mat so that I can get myself into a good yoga seat as well. So however it is that you are sitting, begin to just notice the sense of settling. Notice what's touching the earth, maybe make some adjustments to your body, shifting your hips, shifting the flesh of your buttocks apart just a little bit to give you that sense of, I'm connected to whatever is beneath me. I'm connected to the earth. I can feel the support of whatever is beneath me. I can feel the support of the earth to help me lift and lengthen spine. Open heart. Feel shoulders melt down the back. Notice where your head is. Draw your ears back over your shoulders, chin parallel to the floor. If that doesn't work for your body, you're making adjustments, right? But the idea here is that we're sitting, creating space in our body, creating awareness and allowing breath and energy to flow a little bit more easily. So bring your awareness now to breath. Notice the quality of inhalation. You might even notice that one nostril is allowing you more air than the other. That is totally normal. Throughout the day, our breath comes in differently through each side. As you're sitting, we're going to sit for a few more moments, you might notice that knee is talking to you or toes are talking to you or shoulder. 
Okay. See if you can allow breath to just bring a little bit of softness to that space. Maybe not even making a physical adjustment, but just a mental adjustment or an energetic adjustment with breath. And then notice where your head and your heart are mentally and emotionally. Notice what's going on, not to judge, just to say, hey thoughts, hey feelings, let's just take a pause so we can be fully present in this moment. Take a pause from the thinking and just center yourself into this present moment. As we explore the theme of Santosha, of contentment today, perhaps there might be a place in your life where you want to direct some intention or some Santosha intention today. Maybe it's your physical practice. Maybe you're newer to yoga and you say, oh, I thought I could only feel some santosha, some contentment in these poses today in my body. That would be beautiful. That's a lovely intention. Or maybe heart or mind need a little bit of settling, a little bit of contentment, a little bit of peace. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, and just begin breathing a little bit more deeply, filling up your body with that feeling of intention that you're setting for yourself today. Or feeling that sense of contentment entering your body. Allow breath to rise and fall all the way down into your hand on your belly and all the way up into your heart and hand that's there. Allow that warmth of your touch to help you feel that sense of contentment right here, right now, in this very present moment. Take one more deep breath. And at the end of your exhalation, lower your hands back down and softly blink open your eyes. Hi, everyone. All right, we're gonna start today on hands and knees. If hands and knees does not work for you, you can always do it in a chair. And I'll jump back and forth between chair and mat to just show you what those two ways can look like. When you come on to hands and knees, or if you're sitting in a chair, sit at the edge, and you're gonna just begin moving your body in a way that feels good for you. That could mean cat cow, that could mean just resting your head down, Whatever it means for you, just begin moving and noticing just for a few moments. Making sure that it feels good for you and your body. Bringing yourself a sense of santosha, a sense of contentment in whatever it is that you're choosing to do. And then as you're moving or staying still, see if you can connect breath with movement. So really bringing that awareness from body to breath. <coughs> We're gonna all join together now. So come to a place of neutrality. If you're sitting, bring your hands to your knees. Straighten your spine up nice and tall. And if you're on hands and knees, we're gonna come into table with wrists a little bit in front of shoulders or underneath and knees, either right under hips or a little bit behind. And then we're gonna move through cat and cow together. So on an inhalation, you're gonna draw your heart forward, shoulders come away from your ears. And exhalation, push the floor away from you, round your spine and look towards your navel. The same is true if you're in chair, you're gonna keep moving. If you're in chair, you're drawing your hands and your knees together as you open and lift your heart. And exhale, you're pushing into your knees and rounding your spine, rounding your shoulders towards your ear. Move through cat and cow, full extension of your spine. Stick your tailbone up. When you're inhaling, round your tailbone down on the exhale. One more round if you haven't done it yet. Nice job. The next time you have an exhalation come, 
You're gonna round yourself all the way through cat pose and back into either puppy dog pose coming onto forearms with your tush in the air or all the way back with your heels and your tush touching each other. If you are sitting on the chair, you're gonna just round yourself down as much as you can, belly towards thighs. Hands can come to rest underneath of your head in a way that works for you. Just creating a little bit of sense of pressure on the forehead, a little bit of heart lowering. Take a few breaths here. If you're on the floor in child's pose, walk your fingers far away from you and feel a nice long stretch in your side body. Same thing in the chair, you're gonna stretch your arms out way far in front of you, and then you're gonna walk your fingertips or move your fingertips over towards the right. Feel that stretch in your side body. If you're on a chair, you can even place your right hand on the chair and lift your left arm up so that you're getting that same side body stretch as if you were on the floor. Take one more breath, keep rooting back through the left hip. If you're on the chair or the floor, it doesn't matter. Root back through that left hip and stretch one more breath. And then walk your fingers back through the center and all the way over towards the left this time. Keep rooting down through your right hip now so that you feel that length in your side body. What would Santosha feel like right now? Walk it back towards the center. And then if you're on your mat, you're gonna float yourself back up into table pose. We're gonna do a little bit of hip flexion. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the floor and then I'll show you what it looks like on the chair. So if you're in table pose, you're gonna just lift your right knee, sole of your foot towards the sky. And we're going to do some rotations. So we're going to draw a knee in towards nose, knee out past the elbow, knee out towards the side, and then back around. Knee in towards nose, out towards the elbow, out towards the side. Maybe thigh and shin are parallel to the floor of the side, or not. And then foot goes back towards the ceiling. If you're in the chair, keep going in that same direction. You're going to do the same thing in the chair. You're going to lift your knee. You're going to draw it up, out towards your shoulder, out towards the side. Maybe your thigh becomes parallel with the floor and then back down and around. So you're almost making circles and you can go as slowly or move as fluidly as you like. One more time around. Bring your knee back down for a pause and breath. Either stay in table or if you want to take your breath in child's pose or puppy dog pose. And then we're going to go in the opposite direction. So float yourself back up to table, press your hands strongly into the floor, and then we're going to go the other way. So this time, bring your knee up, foot towards the ceiling, and you're going to go out towards the side first towards your shoulder or elbow, in the front, and then down and back around, right? If you're doing this in the chair, you're doing those same circles. Just be careful that you're sitting on the edge of the chair so that you're able to really get the motion in that hip. The next time the sole of your foot comes towards the sky, you're gonna pause there for a breath, and then exhale to touch back down. If you wanna take a breath off of your wrist, take a breath off of your wrist. Roll them around a little bit. And then you're gonna inhale, float yourself back up to table. Engage the transverse abdominis, these muscles that come around your belly button, so that you're not stabbing in your waistline. Draw those transverse abdominis up, puff up your back just a little bit, and then the sole of your left foot comes towards the sky. Same thing on this side. So I'm gonna let you guys do this on your own a little bit. You're gonna draw your knee towards your nose, elbow, out to the side, back around. 
I invite you to try a couple of times super slowly, and then maybe just a little bit more of a rotation flow. Do a couple of times in each direction, pausing after you do one way. Same thing on the chair, we're engaging transverse abdominis to keep our spine nice and tall. And we're just getting some motion in the hips in both directions. Once you've done enough in each direction, you're going to make the choice to pause either in child's pose, puppy dog pose, or a seated pose. And again, just come back to breath. Nice job. We're going to move into a lunge position. I'm going to demo it on the floor first. If you have blocks or cans, you can always use those to help you. So in the gentle class that we usually have on Thursdays, we've explored lots of ways to get into lunge pose. So one way is to come from table, put your hands on the blocks, and step your right foot forward. Right? Another option is to come from downward facing dog, draw your right knee in towards your nose, step it forward. And another option is similar to the first one, come from table, hands on blocks, step your right foot out to the side, and then step your right foot towards the front. Okay? If you're in a chair, you're gonna turn, we're gonna have our right leg in front, you're gonna turn your body towards the right side of your chair, Plant your right foot right there, and you can bring your left knee pointing down towards the floor so that you're sitting on the edge of the chair. Here is your version of lunge, right? If this isn't working for toes, you could just keep that foot flat on the floor. We're going to work the right thigh a little bit first. If you're in lunge still, you're amazing, good for you. Lift your thighs nice and high. Take a deep breath here, and then exhale, press your energy out through your left heel. Right knee is over ankle. Spine is nice and long. Take one more breath. Exhale, touch your left knee down. Back toes can stay tucked, or you can bring your toenails flat to the floor. And then you're going to come up either higher onto your fingertips on the blocks, or you can bring your hands to your waist. So you might feel a really big stretch in a left hip flexor or left quadricep here. You should feel some strength building in your right thigh though. Take one more breath here. If you wanna bring your hands to your heart or up overhead, you can certainly do that. If you're in the chair, what we're working on is just getting a little bit of a stretch in this back leg. So you can walk that back foot back just a little bit more, keeping the stability of the chair and the strength of your right leg. Nice, if you're still there, you're doing super amazing. Bring your hands to the blocks. Bring your left knee down if it's not yet. Step your right knee back. Bring your hands to the floor. Take an inhale into cow pose and exhale, round it back and come back to child's pose. So the challenge of getting lots of options is it means I'm just talking a little bit more. We're gonna do the same thing though on the other side. I want you to try to hold it for as long as you held it before. So if you held it for all of my instruction, awesome. If you held it for the time that works best for you, you're gonna just try to hold the same poses on the other side for the same amount of time. So we're going to come through either table pose or downward facing dog into the lunge, this time with the left foot forward. Tuck your back toes and lift up your back knee. Lift both thighs really high and then energetically send um, that energy out through your right heel and the crown of your head. Spine stays nice and long. Draw your left heel, your left hip back. Right hip comes forward just a little bit. Again, if you're in the chair, it's the same thing, right? You're bringing your left knee right over your ankle. 
breathing in. Lunges on the floor, you're gonna drop your left knee down. Lunges in the chair, you're gonna lower your left knee down and swiggle it back just a little bit to feel that stretch in that right quadricep, maybe the right hip flexor. If you wanna bring your hands to Anjali Mudra or up overhead, that is more of a challenge for balance, but hands can definitely stay where they're working for you. Take one more breath, super beautiful. Bring your hands back to the blocks, step back and through table and find a place that feels good for you to rest. A seated pose, child's pose, or puppy dog pose. Take one more breath wherever you are, giving your wrists a little roll. Taking the time to reconnect with your intention that you might have set for the practice today. We're just noticing even in all of that firing up of our thighs and our quads and our hamstrings and our, and our hip flexors, where can you find a little bit of contentment? Is there peace knowing that you're building strong muscles? Is there peace feeling that energy flow from the crown of your head out through your heels? On your next inhalation, you're gonna float yourself back up to table pose. This is gonna be our last round of sequence on our hands and knees. We'll all demo it on the chair in just a moment. You're gonna press super strongly into the floor. We're gonna do a little version of Vashisthasana, side plank. The reason we're doing this pose today is it's a really beautiful pose to open up the heart. So extend your right leg behind you, keep your toes on the floor and fire up that leg really strong. Take a deep breath here. On your next inhalation, you're going to shift your weight into your left hand as you turn on to the full sole of your right foot. Bring your right hand to your left waistline and draw your left waistline under. So now you're opening up your body to the right side of your mat. Slide your hand from your left waist across your belly and then maybe to your waist here or arm can come up overhead. I'm going to show this in the chair as well. So our right hand is going to, our left foot is going to be down. Our right leg is going to be back, sort of like we were doing in lunge. And we're going to open it up to the side. Left hand can be right on the seat of the chair. If you want to take another breath here, great. If you're ready to come out, you can. And if you want to go a little bit further, maybe play with lifting your right leg up. Strong, strong leg to try a little bit of balance. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then exhale, you're gonna bring your knee and your hand back down if you haven't already. Inhale through cow pose. Exhale, round it all the way back into child's pose or puppy dog pose or a seat for a breath. Inhale yourself back up through table. Engage this transverse abdominis muscle so that you've got a little bit of a puff in your back body. That's gonna help keep you strong and steady. Extend your left leg behind you. Press that leg strongly as if you've got a wall behind your heel so that that leg is really, really strong. On your next inhalation, you're gonna begin turning and shifting your hands or shifting your weight onto your right hand. Left hand comes to your right waistline. So now you're turning your right waistline so that you're coming a little bit more onto the side part of your hip. And then you're gonna draw your left hand across your belly and open it up towards the sky or keep your hand on your waist. Again, same thing in the chair, right? We've got our left leg back, right leg is strong. We're turning our body towards the left and opening up our left hand. 
So a little version of side plank. Take one more breath. If you want to lift your back leg, you can certainly lift it for a little balancing challenge. And then exhale with as much grace and compassion as you can. Come back down to table. Inhale through cow. And exhale all the way back through cat and child's pose. Puppy dog pose to take the breath to rest. Nice. All right, everyone come to a seat. That was a lot of wrist work. So we're gonna do a little bit of care for our wrists now. Sit in a way that feels comfortable for you and just make a fist, not a tight fist, a loose fist with your hands and just begin rolling your wrists around and around. Roll them in the opposite direction. And then shake them out. Nice. All right, nobody's listening to you. So if you wanna sing with me, you can. Are you ready? Make your hand into a stop sign and we're gonna sing. Stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Take your fingers of your left hand and just gently draw the fingers of your right hand down. Therapeutic discomfort is what we're going for here. Keep breathing here. And then flip your fingers so that your fingers point down and therapeutically draw them towards your body. Therapeutic discomfort is what we're going for. Hopefully that little bit of extra light is helpful. I noticed I was a little in the shadows. Nice, and then shake out that hand. Okay, you know the song now, here we go. Stop in the name of coronavirus before you get too close. I tricked you. All right, draw the fingers of your left hand back. I feel like that could be like a whole new song now. So you're keeping your left arm straight, but don't let your shoulder take too much of the work. Keep your shoulder relaxed. Drop your fingers towards the floor. Gently pull them towards you. For those of you that were doing all the table poses and Vashi Stasana, the side plank or gate pose in the chair, your wrists are gonna bother you quite as much, but it's still a nice thing to do. Shake out that hand and we're gonna do one more little wrist exercise here. So you're gonna bring your arms up like your Popeye and point your fists towards your face, which we're the gym. All right, they're all closed. All right, then you're gonna unfurl your elbows, but keep your fists pointing towards your face as you open it up. Ooh, this is my favorite one to mitigate carpal tunnel syndrome. You can go as slow as fast and do as many times as you want. You should feel a stretch on the top part of your forearm most likely. All right, once you've done as many as you want of this unfurling Popeye muscular one, shake that out. And then just bring your hands in your lap, wherever it is that you are. Close your eyes for two breaths. And just come back, maybe to breath, maybe to intention, maybe for the sense of contentment, peace, santosha. Take one more deep breath here, and then on the end of your next exhalation, you're gonna softly open your eyes. Nice. All right, come on into a standing pose. If you're using a chair, just have it nearby. If you had props on your mat, go ahead and just move them out of the way. And when you come into mountain pose, See if you can really begin settling, just like we did in our seated position. Notice the ground beneath your feet. Notice where your weight is in your feet. Are you more on the front or backs, the left or the right side of your foot? See if you can just play with that a little bit, right? Exaggerate it a little bit, and then come to a place of center. Beautiful. Engage your thighs, even here, right? This isn't standing at the grocery store pose, although we're not really going to the grocery store much, but 
you know, standing and making dinner pose. This is Tatasana. This is mountain pose. Nice. All right, challenge today, toe challenge. We do this in my classes a lot. Lift and spread all 10 toes. I know this is super challenging for some people. See if you can put just your pinky toe down. Yeah, lift that pinky toe up and see if you can just put your big toe down. See if you can leave your big toe down and put your pinky toe down at the same time. Notice if your hands are trying to help. Lift and spread all 10 toes. Put your four little toes down. So now you're kind of going like this. Big thumb up, big toe up. Switch, so big toe is down, four little toes are up. Switch it one more time. And then once again, so big toe is down, four little toes are up. Lift and spread all 10 toes one more time. This time you're gonna try to place them down one at a time, starting with your pinky toe. So what I often tell my students, even though it feels torturous, the reason we do this is the more we can connect with our feet, the more mindfully we can move through the world. So there's a sense of santosha even here, right? How can we be content with wherever it is that we're standing? Part of that way is to feel truly connected to the ground beneath us, to the earth beneath us. Know that it offers us some stability and we have the power to draw energy from the earth into our bodies and to send energy back out into the earth and the world beyond. Take a deep breath and bring your arms all the way up overhead. Root down from your hips all the way down into your heels. Stretch from your waistline up through your fingertips. If there's space and you want to just drop your tailbone and create a little bit of a baby back bend here, you're welcome to do that. Just feel this joyous sense of opening and space you're creating. Take one more breath there and then exhale. It's going to bring your hands straight down to your heart. Take a breath here. Exhale, release your hands by your sides. You're going to shift your weight over into your left foot. So I'm not mirroring you. I'm doing the same thing that you were doing. Pop up your right heel and turn your right knee out towards the side, right? You're not going to have weight in that right foot. So press strongly into your left leg. Engage that left hip even so that you're not sinking it up towards the side. Draw it in towards the midline. And then you're either going to stay right here with your heel touching right above your ankle bone, or you can slide your foot up just a little bit, or reach down and grab it and bring it up over your knee. Not on your knee, because pressure on the knee can be really um, dangerous, right? You can knock that kneecap out of place. Wherever it is that you're standing in, in mount in tree pose, breathe. Hands can come to your heart. They can be out to the side or up overhead. Feel the sense of contentment and notice where it would feel delightful for you to have your arms right now. Take one more deep and full breath here. Exhale, everything comes back down. Come back to mountain pose, hands by your side. Press both feet strongly into the earth. Draw energy up for a nice long spine all the way up to the crown of your head. Shift your weight now into your right foot. Press from your hip into the floor and pop your left heel up. Turn your left knee out and make contact between your left heel right above your right ankle bone. Draw energy into the center of your body, into the midline. So hug in nice and strong. And then if you're gonna slide your foot up, slide your foot up, bring your hands maybe into the same position that you were in on the other side, or maybe you wanna try something different. See if you can, on your next inhalation, press strongly into your right heel all the way down into the earth. Lengthen that leg even a little bit more and bring energy out through the crown of your head in this nice tall tree pose. Take one more bright, shining breath here, everyone. Exhale, bring your hands and your feet back down. Super beautiful. On your next inhalation, bring your arms all the way up overhead. And on your next exhalation, you're gonna swan dive. Bend your knees as much as you want. Stick your butt way far out as you fold forward into Uttanasana. Knees can be bent as much as you want. You're drawing your belly toward your thighs. So again, knees bent, super good. 
Let your head hang right here. Shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. Nice, and then begin straightening just one leg, just a little bit. Bend that knee and straighten the other leg just a little bit. Notice as you do this, you're gonna alternate from one leg to the other. How, if you press your heel into the floor, it can actually maybe help you straighten your leg. If that is too much of an intense stretch to have your hands on the floor, you're gonna do it with your hands on your shins or whatever block prop you have, right? Nice. Press both heels into the floor. Bring your knees just a little bit straighter. Stick your bum really high and let your spine just melt down. On your next inhalation, come up halfway. You can bring your hands onto blocks. Shins are all the way up into your hips. Nice long spine and then exhale, fold forward. Two more just like that. Ardha Uttanasana. Half standing forward fold. Inhale, lengthens you and exhale, brings you down. One more. Inhale, lengthens. Exhale, brings you back down. Beautiful. This time you're gonna inhale, lengthen, bring your hands up to your hips, roll your shoulder blades on your back and press your feet into the floor and then extend your tailbone behind you at the crown of your head out in front of you. Knees can be slightly bent if that works better for you. Bring your hands into your heart center and bend your knees deeply. Keep them in line with each other, so don't let them touch and don't let them splay out. Press all four points of your feet from your big toe, your little toe, and the back corners of your heels into the floor. Drop your tailbone just a little bit so you come upright. Whoa, there's your quads. Engage this transverse abdominus in your core. Draw it in. And then if you want, inhale your arms up overhead. We're going to stay here for two more breaths. If at any point you need to come out, you're going to just straighten your knees. If you want, try to bend your knees just a little bit more, dropping your, your chest towards the floor, but tuck your tailbone and lift your belly. Good. Next inhalation, come all the way up. Inhale. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Shake out your legs. Woo! Can we find santosha, contentment, even when we're working hard? You guys are doing amazing, even though I can only see three or four of you. I know you're hanging in. Good. Take a deep inhale, bring your arms straight overhead. Press your feet strongly into the floor. This time we're going to come into chair pose one more time. This time we're coming from the, the tall version before we came from the low version. So on your next exhalation, you're going to pretend like you're sitting back into a tall bar stool. Hands come straight down to your heart. Knees are staying right over your toes, right? So they don't have to be over your ankles. Press your tailbone down a little bit. Engage your core muscles here. If you're doing this in a chair, you're doing the exact same thing, right? You're pressing into the floor, but now you've got the support of the chair behind you. This time, you're now going to bring your left elbow towards the outside of your right thigh or your left hand towards the outside of your right thigh for a little twisted chair. I know it's really hard. Draw your shoulder blades away from your ears. Send your tailbone towards the floor. Open up your heart right here. Good. Come back to center. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Shake it out. We only have one more side to do. So your choice this time, if you like to come into chair from forward fold, you can do that. Or inhale, raise your arms up overhead. Exhale, sit into your tall, tall bar stool. Ugh. Bring your hands to your heart. Drop your tailbone so you're shifting your pelvic floor forward, lifting your belly just a little bit here. This time, right hand comes to the outside of your left knee or right elbow to left knee. Press your hands together or bring your left hand onto your outer left hip and open up your heart to the right. Same thing if you're in a chair. 
Right, caress into the floor, open your heart to the left. Take one more breath there, my friends. Unwind back to chair pose. Inhale your arms all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands straight down to your heart. Close your eyes or have a soft gaze downward. Notice what's going on in body. Notice what's going on in mind. Notice what's going on in breath. What happened to your intention? What happened to Santosha, the feeling of contentment? Can you tap into it one more time right here? Excellent. Release your hands after your next exhalation. Softly blink open your eyes if they were closed. We're going to come down onto bellies on the floor. If belly is not comfortable for you, you can try this on your back or seated. We're going to do a little bit of belly down breath and then a little bit of cobra and then we'll turn on to our backs to get ready for Shavasana. If you're coming down on, so I'm going to just move my camera a little bit again. If you're coming down onto belly, create a little pillow for your forehead with the hands. Big toes are going to point towards each other and you're going to let your heels splay out toward the side. This is actually called crocodile pose. As you're laying here on your belly or if you're on your side or back, the intention here is to feel breath in the front part of your body. Being belly down gives you the feedback from the floor. Now see if you can feel breath in back body, in particular your low back. That might mean your heels might just open up a little bit more toward the outer edges of your mat creating a little bit of space in the lumbar part of your back, that lower curve. Take two more deep breaths right where you are. Again, if you're on your side or your back or chair, bring awareness to the back body if you've already done the front part of your body. If you're on your belly, you're going to bring your hands about shoulder distance apart, but really far wide. So out beyond the edges of your mat onto spider fingers. So onto your fingertips. Press your feet now, the tops of your feet strongly to the floor, but lengthen your legs before you do that. So lift and stretch back your left leg, lift and stretch back your right leg. Now your toenails are on the mat. And on your next inhalation, you're going to come up into a teeny tiny baby cobra. Exhale to come back down. Two more just like that. Inhale, press into the floor with your legs. Exhale to come down. Inhale, tighten your thighs, get them really active and engaged. Send energy out through your big toe. Exhale to come down. The last one, we're going to inhale, come up into baby cobra and stay for a breath or two. Isometrically draw your fingers towards your body, roll your shoulder blades onto your back, maybe your heart lifts just a little bit more. And then see if you can challenge yourself maybe to lift your fingertips off the floor. Notice if you've got more weight in your fingertips and see if you can use your back muscles to hold yourself up instead of your fingers. Exhale, release all the way down to the floor, really make that little pillow for your head. Bend your knees and the soles of your feet towards the sky and you're going to windshield wiper your, your feet from side to side. For those of you who were in a chair, cobra looks very similar. We're sitting at the edge of our chair and we're opening up our heart. Exhale, come down. Right, so it's really hard to demo two things at the same time. And then we open up our heart, we're isometrically pulling on our knees and then maybe we release our knees and drop our hands by our side. And then to release here, we're going to just drop our knees from side to side, just like everybody else is doing, hands around the chair to help. Good. Everybody, press into the earth if you're on the floor. 
Send your hips all the way back into child's pose or puppy dog pose. Now you're getting the opposite motion in your spine, whereas before we were opening our heart, creating a bit of a back bend. Now in child's pose or puppy dog pose, you're creating a rounded spine. Same thing in the chair. Release your head towards your knees. Everyone, shift your hips so that you're coming onto one hip. Swing your feet around in front of you and come all the way down to your back. If you're going to stay in the chair, I'll model what we're doing in just a moment. You might want to have a block nearby. We're going to do a little bit of bridge pose with movement. So coming onto your back, bend your knees and place your feet as close to your bottom as you want, about hip distance apart. We're not going to go anywhere yet. We're going to just stay right here on our backs for a few breaths. Let your low back, that lumbar curve in particular, just release into the floor, right? So you're not trying to actively flatten your back and tuck your tailbone, but you're allowing the lumbar curve to settle, the front ribs to settle back into the body from that back end of cobra. Take a deep breath there. So when we do our moving bridge today, hands are gonna come down by your sides, pointing towards your feet. On the first inhalation, you're gonna lift your hips and your right arm is gonna come up overhead. The thumb comes towards the floor. Exhale, everything comes back down, hips and hand. The second inhalation, hips and left arm go up. Exhale, everything comes down. And then the third round, both arms come up, reaching above your head as the hips come up. Exhale, everything comes down. So I want you to try a few more rounds of that on your own. Right arm, left arm, both arms. If you prefer to do this in the chair, it's gonna be very similar. You're gonna place both hands on the chair, both feet on the floor, and you're gonna press and lift your hips and your right arm. Exhale to come down. Inhale, right arm presses into the chair. Left arm lifts to come down. You can't really do both arms up and press into the chair, but you can do both arms up, both arms come down. The next time you've completed a round. So the round, the whole round is going to, the whole sequence is going to be right, left, both. I want you to stay up in your bridge pose for a few breaths. If you have a block and you want to slide it underneath of your sacrum so that you can have a more restorative bridge pose, that is another beautiful option. If you're staying up in bridge pose with either both arms overhead, or both arms down. You can also bring your, the backs of your um, upper arms onto the floor and cactus arms press into the floor and feel that opening in heart. If you are staying wherever it is that you're staying, take three more breaths. Deep inhale, Deep exhale. If you want to bring that walk under your sacrum for restorative bridge, you can certainly do that. Make sure that your knees are still staying in a nice straight line, right? Keep your knees safe. At the end of your third exhalation, just allow your body to melt. So if you've got a block underneath of you, remove it and then melt your spine back down onto the floor, extending your tailbone towards your heels. Pause right there and breathe. Nice, draw your knees in towards your belly and rock from side to side. If it feels good, you can reach um, elbow on the inside of your knee towards the outside of your foot for a little bit of a happy baby pose that can also rock from side to side. And if there's anything else that would feel good for you right now before Shavasana, maybe a twist. Maybe just curling your head in. 
giving yourself the biggest hug ever. Whatever would bring you that sense of santosha, contentment right now. Give yourself permission to do it. And then as you're ready to settle yourself into Shavasana, release your body into the ground or the couch or the chair or whatever it is that's gonna be the most supportive, most Santosha Shavasana you have experienced all day. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of guided Shavasana. At some point, I'll ask you to begin breathing a little bit deeper and begin some movements to return to a seat. If you want to stay in Shavasana for longer, you are welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you want. We're gonna close our class today with a little bit of uh, meditation, a little bit of um, a little mantra, and then questions and comments at the end, but you guys do what you need. So if you are lying down, ready for Shavasana, begin noticing the body, starting with your heels, allow your toes to open out, soften your lower leg, Allow it to just rest. Soften your knees, your thighs, your hamstrings, your hips. Release your pelvic floor. Allow it to just melt into the earth. The legs did some really hard work today, and now it's time for them to rest. Time for them to soften. Wherever it is that you are in Shavasana, feel the back body. So if you're lying on the floor, use the feedback from the floor. Notice the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine and the cervical spine. So all the way from lower back, mid back, upper back, all the way into your neck, just softening into the ground beneath you or the props beneath you. Notice breath inside body, expanding your ribs. Notice breath in belly, in heart, in the clavicles, the upper part of your torso, down into your shoulders and all the way out through your arms and fingertips as everything just softens, quiet for Shavasana. Notice breath as it comes in through your nose, down your throat. If you're holding any tension in your jaw or your neck, might be helpful to open and close your mouth a few times really wide here, maybe even sticking your tongue out. When you're ready to have your mouth closed, allow your lips to close, but your teeth to remain slightly separated, root of your tongue heavy. Notice breaths flow through your nostrils, softening the muscles of your face and your inner ears, each exhalation just a little bit softer. Inner and outer corners of your eyes soften. And then finally bring awareness to your third eye, that space between your eyebrows and the middle of your forehead. And see if you can soften, drop that a little bit closer to whatever is beneath your head as you rest and receive the benefits of your practice in Shavasana.
Stay in Shavasana, begin to deepen your breath here, bring awareness back to the present moment. Allow a gentle wiggle of the fingers or toes to bring awareness back to your body in the present moment. As you're ready to make those movements a little bit larger, maybe stretch your arms overhead or draw your knees in towards your belly. With sweetness and gentleness, as you're ready, bend your knees and shift your hips over towards one side and then turn over onto one side, resting in a fetal position for a few moments. If you've turned onto your side, use the strength of your arms to press you back up into a seated position, one where you can feel strong and steady. If you're staying in Shavasana, you're welcome to stay there where you can always do this mantra even laying down. If you're coming into a seat, make sure it's a good seat, right? One where you feel strong and supported, one where you can lift your spine nice and high, just like we did before. Close your eyes, maybe bringing one hand to heart and one hand to belly to check in with yourself one more time as a mindful moment here. How are you feeling at the end of your practice? How's your body? How's your breath? What's the quality of breath right now? What are your mind and heart? And check in with perhaps the intention that you set at the start of your practice today, or notice where you felt contentment, or where contentment, santosha, was a little bit harder. And were you able to guide your breath or your mind into a place of more ease today in your practice? Perhaps there's something that stirred on your mat today in your practice that you would like to take as an intention off your mat. Take a deep breath into whatever that might be. It could be related to santosha, to contentment, as you move away from this yoga practice on the mat to yoga practice in life. Or maybe it's just something more personal to you. Take one more breath with your hand on your belly and your heart if you're there. And then on your exhalation, drop your hands by your sides. We're going to close our class today with a few breathing moments, a few moments of gratitude and a mantra. So inhale, circle your arms all the way up overhead, reach your fingertips towards the sky, lengthen your body and then exhale, slide your hands together all the way down to your heart center. Pause for a moment in Anjali Mudra with your hands at heart center for a moment to feel gratitude. Gratitude for yourself, for your practice, for your body, breath, and mind. Take one more deep breath right there. And then at the end of your exhalation, release your hands by your sides. When you feel the next inhalation come, circle your arms up overhead again. Lengthening, press down into the floor as you reach up. Exhale, hands come straight down to heart center. Pausing here for a moment to feel some gratitude for something larger than yourself. Take one more breath there. Exhale, releases your hands by your sides. One more breath together. 
Inhale, circle your arms up high. Exhale, draw your hands towards your heart. This time, touch thumb right to heart center, right at your sternum to remind yourself to live with your heart lifted and open. We're gonna close class today with a mantra. May I be content and at peace no matter where life takes me. May you be content and at peace no matter where life takes you. May we all be content and at peace no matter where life takes us. Take one more deep breath together here. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to join in your practice today. I wish you all a sense of contentment, of ease, and of peace. I'm gonna unmute everyone so that if you have any feedback or questions, I'm happy to answer or check in and chat.